Hello and welcome to Midweek Meditations, where we have an opportunity to briefly share with you what God has shared with us. You know, at New Life, we're into this series entitled, Pardon Our Mess, New Life is Under Construction. And we mean that both literally and spiritually. Literally, we're, we're in the process, we're laying plans for the restructuring of our church, the refurbishing of our church, the upgrading of our church, but we're also asking the Lord to do that for us spiritually in our own personal lives. And I want you to continue this journey with us. We looked at Nehemiah chapter three and four, and we learned this word called synergy. Synergy, which means the coming together. Synergy is all about when two or more can do much more than just one person can do by themselves. As a matter of fact, I want to share quickly with you Ecclesiastes 4 verses 9 through 11. If you don't mind, can you catch this with me? Here it is. It says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For they fall, one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up again. If two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Oh, I want to talk to you for just a minute, few minutes about what chapters 3 and 4 in Nehemiah teach us about synergy and what and the power of working together. First thing, first thing, Nehemiah chapter 3 gives us a graphic picture of synergy. It reminds us of what synergy looks like. All through Nehemiah chapter 3, you look at individuals working together, coming together for the common good, coming together for the rebuilding of the walls, for the strengthening of the gates of Judah. Oh, it's powerful. But then chapter 4 gives us our second point. Our second point is the power of synergy. Oh, there is power in synergy. When the folk came together, they were able to do a great work for the cause of God. They they were able to toward all that the enemy was throwing at them. And, and I want to pause and tell you that the enemy was throwing some things at them. But when they had synergy, it brought them together and they received the necessary power from each other to pull off what they were called to do. Now, my last point, and that's point number three. We learned that when you have synergy, it blunts the opposition. Oh, I didn't say it stops the opposition. I said it blunts the opposition. Uh, the Bible talks about how weapons formed against us, they won't prosper. But the Bible does not say the weapons are not coming our way. And I want to tell you something, that whenever you're doing something for the cause of God, there will be opposition. There will be things that will come up against you. But it's all how you view the opposition. It's all about when you got some people standing with you, when you know that you got some strength in numbers. Oh, it is awesome to know that. It's all about how your perspective is regarding the opposition. I want to take this time to, as I'm preparing to close to tell you a quick little story. This is a powerful illustration about synergy and opposition. Ah, this father, he's talking to his daughter and his daughter's complaining about everything that's going on in her life. She said, this life is difficult. Life is hard. It seems every time I'm, I make one step, I get pulled back another step and she's just having such a difficult time. So the father who's a chef says, let, let me show you something. He pull, brings her into the kitchen and he turns, he put, uh, pulls out three pots and he pours water in each of the three pots and turns the uh, uh, eye on and turns it up as high as it will go and he places the pots on top of those hot eyes and the hot eyes begin to boil. They're boiling but then he does something. He grabs a carrot drops it in the water. He grabs an egg, drops it in the water, and then he grabs some coffee beans and drops it in the water. He allows them to boil and boil and boil and boil. And finally, he takes them off the eyes and he sets them aside and he places, he places the carrot on the plate. He places the egg on the plate and he places the coffee in a cup. And so he says to his daughter, he says, daughter, what do you see? And she said, I see a carrot and I see an egg and I see some coffee. She says, here's what, here's what he says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to feel 
feel the carrot and she feels the carrot and she knows that it's soft. And then he says, I want you to break the uh, shell of the egg and I want you to feel the egg. And now she notices that the egg is soft. But then he says, look at the coffee. As a matter of fact, don't just look at the coffee, take a sip of the coffee. And so what does she learn from this experience? She's trying to figure out. She's saying, listen, they all went through the same thing. They all were placed in the same type of water at the same heat, but they each came out differently. The hard carrot was softened. The fragile egg became hard inside. But watch this, watch this. The coffee, the beans, they didn't change. They changed the water. And you and I have to ask ourselves the simple question, which one of these three are you when it comes to opposition and adversity? I want to be one of those that changes the water. God, help us to be that type of person. God, give us strength to be that type of person. God, give us strength to hold on against the opposition. I look forward to hanging out with you on next week, but I also want you to hang out with us this coming weekend as we consider part five of Part in Our Mess. New life is under construction. Until we meet again, may the Lord bless and keep you is my prayer.